That's a lot of snow. It sure is. Are you okay? Um, I'm not doing that. It's up to here. Yeah, no. Ah. Oh my God, it's cold. No. It's so cold that the fingers of my gloves will not even bend. They're so, it's like solid. Solid, frozen. Oh, you got the home fires warm. And coffee. And coffee. Oh, Mom, you're the best. I love you. We're coming in. Hi everybody, Rich and Kathy here again. Just wanted to talk a little bit about the winter upstate New York and the snow. Two weeks ago, we were up there uh, at Kathy's parents' house and they got hit with the uh, winter storm Harper and it was over two feet of snow. So it got us thinking a little bit about how we want to try and prepare our future homestead to be a little proactive about how we're going to handle the snow uh, and what, where we're going to push the snow and uh, all of that. So one of the first things that we're going to get is we're going to make sure we have either a snow plow or hopefully a, a tractor in the future which would help push the snow. Oh. Kathy's parents have about a 500 foot driveway that we were out there busting our butt for a good couple of hours when what we had was... I wasn't. Rich and Dad were. <laughs> he had a big heavy duty snow blower and uh, an ATV with a plow on the front and we managed to get through it. We didn't plow all of the two feet at once because we just couldn't so we did it in two halves we you know by the time the first foot fell and we went out and we dug uh, cleared the whole driveway and then uh, later on in the afternoon we cleared the rest of it uh, for the second foot of snow <laughs> so um, yeah it's a lot of work and just got us thinking a little bit how to plan uh, with our future homestead some of the things they have going for them is that their driveway is flat Ours has a little bit of a hill and a curve. And it's longer. Right? And it's longer. <laughs> so we will need something a little bit bigger. And um, I think a snow plow while being inside of a nice warm pickup truck is the way to go. And then maybe I can even try it. Yeah, <laughs> sure can. And one of the other problems that we run into is where to push all that snow because there is quite a bit of it. Our camper is parked in their driveway, unfortunately, right where they normally push all their snow. So it was a little bit more of a challenge this year for them. So we felt kind of bad about that. Sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> but uh, our, our driveway and our future setup, we already have a place sort of planned out where we're going to push the snow. There's a little, like, cutoff on the side of the driveway um, that would uh, be a good area to push it all. What else? I think that's it with you the snow. you want to talk about... Uh, well, like a carport? Yeah, actually I do. Mom and Dad have a carport, which is really, really nice. Um, but unfortunately, they could only put one car underneath it. And, you, you know, that car was like clear. There was like no snow on it. It was really easy to clear. There wasn't a lot of snow underneath it. And it was really nice. Um, they could have probably fit the other car under there, but with the with the little ATV snowplow and the snowblower and the other things that they wanted to keep the easily ATV. accessible... Right. Uh, there really isn't a lot of room. So we definitely want to build a nice big carport that can hold at least two cars and a bunch of other stuff. I cleared off two trucks and that was a real, that was a lot of work to clear the foot of snow off the roof of two trucks. It's so high and it was really hard to reach. And actually, I know it sounds really lazy, but it was exhausting to do it. And then I was making another mess of snow right where they had already like cleared so I, I don't want to do that down the road we definitely want to make well, sure we are you know feeling good and strong and healthy today but you know in the future it might be a little bit harder well we, and we get older yeah we plan on living out the remainder of our lives at this homestead that we're building so we really want to make it as easy for ourselves in the future as possible and then with the carport you were talking about like loads on the roof snow load on the roof absolutely yeah so what we want to make sure that we build our carport strong enough with trusses and we're kind of undecided whether we should go with like either a metal roof so the snow would slide off or a traditional type of roof but I was thinking more of sort of a uh, I'm leaning towards a traditional type of roof actually with sort of like a lean-to sort of roof offset 
Gable. Um, it's going to come down to like cost. Yeah, I mean, and we'll figure out where we want the snow to fall because, like, if we make a metal roof and uh, the way our our footprint and plan is with the house, uh, the snow could just slide off right in front of everything and just it'll be a, more of a mess to clean. We so. don't want it to fall behind the cars. Yeah, so we're working on that, and if anybody has any ideas about that, yeah, uh, we please definitely feel free to comment on that one because we're, we're, we're really open to suggestions. You know, we're we're finding our way through this, and we do have some plans, but uh, those plans can change all the time. And one of the things that we want to make sure is we have our house with a sort of a walkway right to the carport, which would be you know, sort of sheltered so you wouldn't okay. have to dig your way out to the car. Well, and that's the thing, after having to shovel our way to get everywhere, uh, we kind of realized that's not what we want to do all the time in the future, especially in a place where snow it snows all the time, hopefully. Um, we don't want to spend our time shoveling constantly, at, or and when we get older we may not be able to do it so much, right? But there's something that I've been researching and it's called a connected farmstead. And I bought this really great book. It's called Big House, Little House, Back House, Barn. And it's all connected. It's all connected. These were really common. They're called farmsteads. And they were very common in, uh, I think, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. That's pretty much where most of these are located. Is that back in the day, or is that still? No, there are that's... still some that are there. A lot of them are gone because people don't really farmstead anymore. But the concept, to me, just makes so much sense because we will not have to go outside to get to any part of our farmstead. It'll literally be connected. So, so yeah, we'll have like the carport connected to the house. Then the house is also going to be connected to the uh, mud room. The, the mud room and, and then into the garage. Between, right. And then the garage will be connected to like the chickens and the far the area where the animals are, and then that will be connected to the barn. So you'll the be greenhouse is in there. Oh, there's also a greenhouse, the greenhouse in between, and <laughs> then the barn. Greenhouse. So it'll be all connected. That's the plan. And we never will have to go outside really at all to get to any of the things that need daily maintenance during the winter um, to be taken care of. So that's I think. The, the connected farmstead idea is a really great thing. The big problem from my research so far that I found was fires. If they would get a fire, it would literally burn through all the way to their main house. Mm. So we, the way we're planning it, I don't think that's going to be a big deal for us because our house is made of cement and buried under three feet of soil with a lot of insulation and, and things in there as well. So I don't think the fire hazard as far as our main house would be a problem. I think it could be a problem with the garage right, and, the uh, and the barn and the mud room and the, and the chickens in the barn. But I have some ideas. You know, we could use that special um, sheetrock. There's like a fireproof sheetrock right, right. that they made us put between the garage and the house yeah, fire here. Grade. Yeah, you're a fire have to grade sheetrock. Anyway. We could also do um, um, stone walls in between, cement walls in between mm -hmm. each of the buildings for safety. Um, have a lot of ideas for that. And that's one reason why metal roofs might be a good thing too. Okay. But in my thoughts and my research. But anyway, ideas welcome. But that's what we're thinking about as far as the animals go. We won't be building that all at once. It'll be one in little stages. piece of at a time. Uh, again, we're trying not to uh, borrow any money. We're trying to save and build as we go one little bit at a time. So this spring, we have the plan of the septic system. Septic system's going in in the spring. We already did the road <laughs> and the well. So we're looking at the septic and the, uh, oh, what was the other? Oh, electric. That's yeah. a big one. Yeah. Gotta have power. That's a big one. I do like the idea of a mud room because when we came in, we were covered with snow. <laughs> Her father looked like a big snowman. <laughs> he did. And uh, you know, you got all that gear. You got your boots. You got your your your, your snow pants and your coat and hat and gloves and all that stuff is all wet. And you Soaking wanna, wet. You want to come in uh, and have an area just to take off all your shoes without tracking it all throughout the house. So mm -hmm. we're going to make like a little mud room area when we when we walk in, and I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, at my parents' house, we ended up hanging everything in the in the bathroom, which was okay, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if we can, if you know, we have the opportunity to plan ahead and seeing that and, you know, experiencing it firsthand, 
I think a mud room would be a really awesome place to just have everything hang, hung. Nice and neat and easy. Also easy access when you want to go out really fast too. So we're just definitely going to try to plan that into um, our structure. All right, one last thing. I went up a week after Winter Storm Harper to my parents to help out with some things. And uh, we had had a big storm with a lot of rain. And a lot of the snow melted, not all of it, a lot of it. But their driveway was ice. a sheet of ice, a total sheet of ice. So the connected farmstead idea where everything is still connected, mm -hmm. that's another, in my opinion, really good justification for a connected farmstead. So we don't have to deal with going out and walking on the ice to get from the house to the animals What's or the from car? the house to the car. That is a complete and total nightmare. Um, I did use crampons when I was there. My mom had crampons and I borrowed them so that I could go back and forth to the car to load it when I was getting ready to uh, leave. I'm borrowing my mom's crampons. You can hear the crampons like sticking into the ice. But wow, really, really icy. Yeah. And our driveway with the hill and oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. So crampons uh, are a definite plus, but the connected farmstead is going to be really huge for us, really huge. I can't think of too many other things. We have a lot of things to think about and we're really open to any suggestions that anybody who lives in a cold climate might have for us because we're moving from a climate where we have winter, we have all four seasons, but we don't get really crazy snowstorms here. So if you have any suggestions about homesteading in a very cold climate where you get a lot of snow and ice, we would really appreciate if you'd comment and let us know what you're thinking because if we could plan now, before we do it, I think that uh, that just makes common sense. Definitely comment if you have any ideas uh, or thoughts on this uh, or concerns. Uh, we're welcome to hear it all because we're doing our research and Open we want to, to minimize the amount of mistakes we make. It's about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Looks like the sun tried to peek through a little bit. The snowstorm is coming to an end. We're wrapping up our second clean of the day. I'm gonna to try to zoom in more. It's so beautiful. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Time to go in, warm up, and have some hot cocoa. Thanks for visiting. Please like and subscribe, and see you on the next video.